Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks uh, for joining our meeting. Today we have um, a short uh, webinar and uh, open q &A about uh, DevOps world and the community agenda there. So we will talk about what events uh, you should expect in your DevOps world and how to apply and uh, what uh, would be the interesting topics to the audience. The presentation will be quite short, but uh, and we will focus on q &A. So today we have two presenters, um, Alisa and me. Alisa, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, thanks, Oleg. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Alyssa Tong. I've been with the um, Jenkins Project since 2011. My previous role has been events officer. So at the moment, I'm driving Jenkins is the way initiative, uh, which is where we collect Jenkins user stories and case studies and we share them with the community. I'm also a current, a, a current member of the advocacy and outreach SIG. Thank you. And, and, uh, I'm one of Jenkins' uh, contributors and co-maintainers. I also contribute a lot of various events, including Oktoberfest, Google Summer of Code, and currently I'm an acting uh, events officer. So I organize various events, and I also help to organize uh, the community agenda for DevOps world. Um, so uh, let's talk about it. Um, OK. Uh, so again, uh, just a quick introduction, then call of papers and Kony. If you have any questions uh, during the discussion, uh, so you can ask uh, questions using Zoom Kony. So if you go to the panel, there is Kony button. You can just put questions there. And uh, after um, um, the main presentation, we will just uh, grant voice permissions to everyone. So you will be able to ask questions um, just by unmuting yourself. Um, after the presentation, we have created a Slack channel in the Continuous Delivery Foundation workspace. So you can go there and ask any questions, and the session will be recorded, of course, so you will be able to access all the data. Okay, so what is DevOps world? Um, I guess many of you have already participated. If not, just a quick introduction. So DevOps World uh, started in 2011 as Jenkins User Conference, then it was renamed to Jenkins World, um, and now it's called uh, DevOps World. So the event itself uh, has uh, a long history. It has been uh, evolving uh, over the past years. Uh, so it started as Jenkins on the event and uh, other topics we added. Now the focus is rather on the entire DevOps uh, ecosystem and processes. So uh, there is a focus on developer tools, there is leadership tracks, practitioner uh, tracks, and also community tracks, uh, including um, DevOps communities and organizing the events. Uh, but uh, Jenkins still has a very strong representation at the conference, uh, about 25% or 30% of talks are related to Jenkins, and uh, the World World is a really big uh, conference. So last year we had 25 registrations and uh, at least uh, 2,000 participants. So it, uh, why I say at least, because uh, this is how many participants I had in my talk there. So uh, I see, uh, presumably there are uh, much more participants. And yeah, uh, we have representatives uh, from many countries and from many speakers. So it's a nice event and yeah, all uh, the talks are already available on YouTube. So if you're interested, you can uh, take a look. I'll uh, focus on the community side. And on the community side, we traditionally have a quite packed agenda. So we have some representation at the keynotes because the yeah, DevOps world is organized by CloudBees. CloudBees is one of uh, uh, Jenkins company contributors, uh, contributing around 30% uh, of code at the moment uh, to Jenkins. And uh, we're interested uh, in supporting Jenkins uh, in many ways. So for example, Kosaki, uh, the creator of Jenkins, he uh, presented much at every DevOps World and uh, Jenkins World conference. And you can find a lot of keynotes with uh, overview of uh, Jenkins plans there. Um, and yeah, that's not the only talk. Uh, so last year, again, we had almost 30% of Jenkins related talks. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, we have key contributors presenting. Uh, so basically, if you go to Jenkins GitHub, you can find a lot of uh, familiar of names like JC Gleek or Mark Waite or Liam Newman. You can see them on the picture, by the way. And yeah, many other contributors join and uh, present uh, there. 
including uh, feature announcements, some insights about uh, Jenkins development and where it involves. And we also have newcomer talks, hardcore talks, talks focusing on Jenkins users like troubleshooting, uh, configuring Jenkins properly, uh, performance analysis, etc. etc. So the conference has a very diverse agenda uh, from the community standpoint, and everyone is invited to participate. Okay, we also have community booth. Uh, so it's uh, one of our, our main areas where we gather as a Jenkins community. So we have asked the, the experts there. There are hundreds of participants coming, asking any questions. We also have uh, community demos there. For example, traditionally we had demos by uh, JSOC students and uh, various live demos for features basically just developed yesterday. Uh, sometimes uh, literally because we had uh, hackathons before the event. And we use the community boost to demo that. And of course, um, yeah, there were main meetings because it's one of the places where Jenkins contributors uh, meet in person. Uh, this year, the event will be virtual, but we still plan to have a booth and have a lot of community discussions there. We also traditionally have a contributor summit. It's an um, event um, up to 100 participants uh, where we talk about Jenkins evolution, about the various key stories, about the roadmap for the project. And uh, we also have user representation there. So users bring up their concerns, they need, and we try to discuss the and plan a revolution. What else? Uh, there is also a collective contributor summit uh, where we meet. Uh, well, this is just another photo. So be sure it's just uh, drinks, etc. We also have a lot of real discussions. So it's a full day, day event and feel free to join. It's yet to be announced uh, for um, uh, DevOps World this year, uh, but we also have uh, a contributor summit at CDCon on June 25th. It's already announced and you can uh, register. Um, yeah, some other cool stuff. So we have community awards. So for example, uh, maybe, uh, had many contributors to highlight. You can see Evelina getting a top contributor award in 2019, if I recall correctly. We also had Jenkins ambassadors um, in 2018. Uh, this year, this agenda partially goes to CityCon in June, but uh, yeah, hopefully you'll also have uh, some things to celebrate um, as a part of DevOps flow. And yeah, community bonding. Uh, there is a lot of that. So again, this event is virtual, so no chance to meet in the bar, et cetera. But yeah, historically we do that and hopefully we'll organize a, a happy hour as a part of DevOps work as well, so that contributors can uh, join together and chat. So that's what we do. Also, there are some hackathons. Again, maybe we won't have it uh, this year, but yeah, mm, uh, there are various events happening and we prototyped a lot of cool things during hackathons, for example, support for Java 11, um, the first uh, versions uh, of uh, pluggable storage for logs, uh, and many other things we created during hackathons. So it also helps us. So that's um, agenda, and that's what we have as a community uh, at once. So it's not just about talks. We will be working on this agenda, and if you have any questions, if you want to participate in organizing events, uh, uh, or we just want to participate in a particular kind of, of events, let us know in a QA and a later discussion so that we can plan together. And now we switched to another part about uh, call for papers. And yeah, I guess Alisa, the floor is yours. Yep, thanks, Oleg. So, mm -hmm. some key information about DevOps World um, the event will begin on September 28th through the 30th. It's a free virtual event and registration will be available in June uh, via the www.devopsworld.com link. Next slide, Oleg. Yeah. Um, this is the layout of the conference week. So September 28th, which is considered day zero, will consist of trainings and workshops. Um, and then on the main conference days, which is September 29th and the 30th, will consist of keynotes, breakout sessions for a leadership track, the practitioner track, community, and CDF tracks. The virtual expo hall will also be open, as well as um, other fun activities. And then as Oleg mentioned, on Friday, we're thinking, um, that's October 1st, we're thinking of hosting a contributor summit. So um, this is to be confirmed. So more information to come on this later. 
Next slide. Mm -hmm. The current plan for the community activities at DevOps World includes, um, as I mentioned, two community oriented workshops on September 28th. That's the day zero. And then on September 29th through the 30th, there will be breakout sessions on Jenkins and general um, community related topics. The Continuous Delivery Foundation has a track that focuses on practices for software delivery automation, education, adoption of CD tools and methodologies. Um, the practitioner track provides a range of content on the how of the end-to-end -end software delivery across DevOps culture. It includes people, process, tools, and technology. And some of the to be confirmed activities um, includes community keynote by CDF, ask the experts within the virtual hall, and as mentioned, the Jenkins Contributors Summit for Friday, October the 1st. Um, and as Oleg mentioned, the Jenkins Award, which is usually hosted um, during, was usually hosted during DevOps World, will be moved to um, CDCon, which will take place in June. Next slide. Um, you might ask what type of content would be considered under the community track. So open source projects such as emerging technologies um, in software delivery or community building strategies are, are good um, submissions or talks to, to have. Tips or demos on open source tooling and methodologies um, works well. Knowledge sharing via end user stories or educational use cases also works. And of course, um, security and compliance is always a hot topic amongst our attendees. So um, those, those are just uh, some suggestions for submissions. I think the next yeah. slide is yours, Oleg. Okay, uh, so what can you present about uh, Jenkins? Actually, pretty much anything uh, related to Jenkins. So we are looking uh, uh, for success stories, for overview of new features, live demos, if you're interested, for example, if you're a developer, uh, please talk about that. If you want to uh, share your story as a developer, you can uh, talk about pipelines, how you create them, how you create shared libraries, so how you manage Jenkins at scale. Of course, any talks about tool integrations are welcome, as well as various uh, discussions about how you actually apply Jenkins to your continuous integration, continuous delivery, DevOps, and pretty much any other use cases. So if you want uh, to submit something, please do. And uh, it's not uh, limited to just software. For example, if you're a hardware engineer, if you want to uh, work on CI/CD for hardware, for embedded automotive, these talks are also well represented at DevOps world. At least we have uh, some talks. And uh, we're interested to have this wide agenda so that uh, the other industries are also represented. Okay, some uh, tech areas uh, just based on uh, recent technologies. So, of course, pipeline is called, configuration is called, uh, new plugins, integrations, modern packaging. So, whether it's Helm charts, Kubernetes, etc., and yeah, various distributions. Yeah, the animation is messed up here. Uh, but uh, yeah. If you want uh, to present any new technology or new uh, solution for Jenkins, whether it's open source or not, it's a good opportunity uh, to talk about that. So for the community track, we rather target open source systems, but there are other tracks which uh, welcome any kind of talk. And yeah, that's it for me. So, a call for papers. Yep, so call for paper is currently opened um, and it will close on May 20th. Proposals can be submitted via the link you, that you see there. The next slide. Mm -hmm. Some suggestions for when you do submit. Um, the review committee has to go through hundreds of submissions and you only have a few seconds to really impress them with your abstract. So my suggestion would be to be concise and staying with the main points will help move your abstract to the next level. 
Relevancy is very important because people want to learn the latest and greatest tools and technologies. And if, if that can help and apply to the majority of the audience, that is even better. And then your proposal should be educational. Does it solve a specific problem? Do you have tips and tricks that, uh, that our audience can um, take away and use? And then lastly, stay away from product pitches because those proposals do get declined. Next slide. Um, so if your proposal does get selected, CloudBees has been generous uh, that they will offer free speaker group training. Space, spacing is limited, so it's first come first serve. So get your submissions in fast and write them well. Next slide. Um, so the call for pay, let me see. Okay, so what we're doing is um, with today's sessions, uh, we have, isn't, we, we wanna open this up for um, Q and A and in any way answer questions that um, folks might have. We will also have um, another session similar to this on May 10th, which will cater to the um, APAC audience. And then um, we also have Slack channel um, that, we can also accept um, Q and A with regards to the CFP. Okay. Next slide. Next slide. Okay. All right. So um, let me see some key takeaways. Um, strong community agenda. We'll definitely have that at the conference. You do not need to be a Jenkins rock star to submit a proposal to speak. Um, all levels are welcome, all talks are welcome. Um, submit your applications on time. The, the deadline, as I mentioned, is May 20th and good luck. Next slide. Oh, I don't think we have a next slide. We just have okay. a few links. So uh, you're fine. Yeah. yeah, so um, I, I can talk about this one. So um, mm -hmm. we, this reference page, We've highlighted a lot of the links below and we mentioned them throughout our session today. Although one thing that I do wanna call out is the last bullet, um, which is the DevOps World 2020 on-demand videos. So hopefully, um, you know, in case you, you know, want to use um, what, when you wanna understand what was accepted last year and use that as inspiration for this year, um, please feel free to use that. quite a lot of presentations. It, it is. Um, however, there is a filter there, Oleg, and can filter it through leadership or um, community and such. And, um, yeah, on your right hand top. Yeah. Use case solution. Yeah, so where should I click? The uh, on your right hand side, well, it's on my right hand side. It says more filters. Oh, right. Sorry, I just don't see it because of uh, Zoom layout. Okay. Um, yeah. And uh, I click community track, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you can um, see quite a lot of uh, talks. Yeah. So we were I talking, believe for example, about they're uh, all there. your reward, about uh, uh, Jenkins roadmap, or GitHub checks, um, it's a new plugin which was delivered. Also, I talk about Jenkins, where it is and uh, where it's going. Uh, hopefully, I will uh, be able uh, to do a new uh, version uh, next year. Let's see. Um, but yeah, maybe if you want to see the content, it's definitely uh, the great entry point. Okay. Um. So like, do we want to cover, I think it's slide 26. Um, mm -hmm. Just want to give a shout out to our review committee. Um, these are folks who are contributors within the Jenkins community. They are vol volunteering their time to be part of the, this community program review. So um, just wanted to say thank you to them. And also, um, if anybody else is interested, please feel free to reach out to us via the Slack channel there or the um, Advocacy and Outreach SIG. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, thank you. Somehow missed uh, this slide. Okay, so yeah, thanks everyone. And uh, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to grant voice permissions to everyone so we can discuss uh, questions. Um, just stay online. Okay. So if you want uh, to speak, you need uh, to use uh, the new um, um, yeah, Zoom client. So for example, I cannot grant permissions to speak uh, to Peter because he uses a old version. Uh, okay. So I had a question about um, uh, CFP. So is the CFP submission first come first served? Alisa, what do you think? Um, so it is, it is not first come first serve. Um, although when you submit early, you will get uh, more time with the reviewer uh, who spends more time on your submission. So you might have a higher chance. Um, it really depends on the quality of your abstract and what you want to talk about. Hi, I, I also just wanted to know that uh, with regards to the submission policy. So um, we know that DevOps is quite wide, right? I, there are a lot of different technologies. Uh, is uh, the DevOps uh, community, they're looking for a specific technology or giving more higher priority or is it the same? So, I mean, for example, someone who might be interested in MLOps or let's say Jenkins, right? So is there any priority that is also being given to certain topics or certain technologies within DevOps? Or is it, uh, we can use like, let's say, uh, we can go towards more cloud native DevOps side as in, so we can pick up any topic. Yes, yes, um, you can pick up those topics. And again, if you can just, just keep in mind to stay with relevancy, right? So what's the latest and greatest technology? What are people interested about? And again, those kind of topics should also apply to the larger audience, to the, to the critical mass, right? So if you can get those two combinations together, I think you have a winning combination. Right, thank you very much. You bet. There's another question about um, examples. So do we have an example of a good abstract? Um, I can, I will probably have to look it up. Um, I'll look it up and I can provide it to, uh, to this deck. Largely when you go um, to the DevOps World website, you can find the uh, descriptions there. And these descriptions are more or less aligned with what was in the application abstract. So when you apply, you will need to answer a few questions. So firstly, provide the abstract of your talk and then clarify what would be the value for the audience, provide some additional insights. But yeah, the main part is actually the abstract. Yeah. So, okay, we can go to um, DevOps school sessions. So here, for example, we, I just opened a random one. And here you can have uh, can find session description. So this is basically the focus. The encoding is broken here. Um, but yeah, so my recommendation would be to just start from this website or from recordings of previous events because uh, there are many good abstracts there. Does it answer your question? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. thank you um, I also just had one question and that is uh, with regards to uh, the abstract as well, uh, because normally what happens is that, uh, you know, we tend to go and just tell what our abstract is all about. So, I mean, mm -hmm. there's one thing that of course, if it, even if it's to the topic, let's say, if, you know, if it's to the point and what we're trying to describe, but can you give some suggestions having looked at so many different proposals over the years uh, to make your abstract, you know, stand out? Because one is that you, okay, so let's say if I'm going to be talking about um, a Kubernetes operator, I, I'll describe in my uh, abstract that in this talk, I'll uh, be talking about uh, the Kubernetes operator or, or like just some mm -hmm. kind of an XYZ example. So how can we now upskill this even further to make it 
stand out because as you said that it only takes the first 5 10 seconds for the uh, reviewers to understand whether it, this will be a good proposal or not so can you give some tips and tricks to make your abstracts more at- attractive and and more relevant at the same time yeah so first thing you need to understand your target audience because again devops world includes um a uh, wide audience including developers and users uh, uh, practitioners managers and uh, first thing for you would be to understand who would you be talking to then based on that uh, you basically need an elevator pitch so quickly communicating what is the idea and what is outcome uh, for participants so if they decide to visit your talk uh, they need to understand uh, what uh, they will uh, Uh, learn from that or basically it can be either a group case study so that uh, they uh, look at that uh, go and apply uh, their work it may be a concept uh, basically which they can adopt um, and uh, yeah, you need to quickly summarize that and uh, highlight what would be the outcome that would be the first goal and then you uh, can provide uh, just a few additional sentences of uh, what's inside So that whomever is interested uh, in what's under the hood, uh, they can understand what are the technology keywords and uh, what uh, they will be looking at in details. All right, thank you. Yeah, so it's uh, just on the top level. Again, um, if you want to take a look at some abstracts, we have some abstracts in public on the um uh, website and you can see that uh, the most of abstracts they are quite short so you can uh, start from that also uh, like you know <laughs> there's always uh, this kind of a conundrum that um how should we uh, devise our presentation at the same time like so one is that yes uh, we need the presentation to be relevant and it has to uh, be exciting as well at the same time let's say you know making uh, a talk about new technologies so um, do you have some tips to uh, those people who are applying for you know the first time because usually they might focus too much on the content rather than let's say you know or they might be confused on let's say uh should i put in a code sample or should i just represent code samples or should i keep it a mix of you know some information and a code sample so how can uh, beginners based on the projects that they choose to present can update their presentation because as you said that there will be co- there will be uh, uh, you know presentations with code samples as well so for those newcomers who want to try it out who might be contributing but they might not necessarily know how to present those talks so specifically for them how can they balance between both okay, so yeah, it really depends on uh, your preference because having an exciting talk again it depends on the target audience you can uh, have uh, 20 hardcore uh, developers in the room uh, who want to understand let's say uh performance issues caused by particular java version and they will be so excited about this talk uh, but uh, nobody else would understand a thing about from that or you could uh, target a, a wider audience talk and again you you like to have a target audience there so the recommendation from me would be the firstly focus on the uh, you have expertise in so there are way you can actually share something new with others and uh, start expanding uh, from that um so what specifically what is the percentage depends uh, on the audience so if you prepare a light talk uh, for newcomers then yeah most likely you will need to spend a lot of time explaining basics for example if you want to talk about managing jenkins in kubernetes most likely you will need to understand explain some kubernetes basics for newcomers but if you tar- target professionals and experienced then you can just go straight to interpreters and whatever you wanted to present just uh, one uh, example so try to profile uh, the talk accordingly so just take your audience uh, focus on what uh, they're interested in and do not try to address the entire devops uh, 
uh, ecosystem uh, and, the, uh, and the entire community because there will be multiple tracks. So people will be able to select where to go. You don't have to focus on everyone. You need to focus on your target audience. Does it make sense? Yeah, it makes absolute sense. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Yeah. So yeah, for my, if you're interested in ML ops, then you, you can uh, start building from that. So for example, if you target specifically a Jenkins-based presentation, then you explain it. For example, use cases for ML ops uh, would be nice because not every Jenkins user knows uh, what is ML ops. It's still emerging. Uh, uh, industry, then uh, after that you can uh, deep dive into uh, details, uh, for example, how you integrate it with Jenkins, what plugins you use, how to integrate plugins. Yeah, I'm not sure how you would do that, but um, yeah, you can go into details, but for ML ops, likely you will need a kind of introduction for the most of the audience. Any other questions, comments? Uh, it was like uh, just a more, uh, you know, um, not really related to the CFPs part, Oleg, but uh, it's like a question that, of course, like being, you know, an open source maintainer and having been in the open source space for quite a long time. Uh, you yourself, uh, you know, must have been a speaker uh, for an, obviously you have been a speaker to a lot of different conferences. So how has that transition been from being a speaker to becoming a reviewer? And like, how has that journey been for you? Well, for me, it was quite easy. I became a reviewer before I became speaker. Uh, because yeah, I came from academia and in academia you mostly write papers. Uh, but uh, yeah, the same approaches apply there as well, um, especially when we are reviewing abstracts and we were organizing conferences, I was a reviewer. If you want to uh, transition from speaker to reviewer, mm, I'm not sure. I mean, the first thing would be just uh, uh, quickly understand the idea and then being able to analyze the talk. Because yeah, as Alisa said, you might be spending 10 seconds or 30 seconds to understand what it's about, whether you're interested, and then you would deep dive. So there are links attached, um, um, you would like to analyze that. For example, sometimes you may end up uh, in the GitHub repository, checking uh, the contributions, if uh, there are specific contexts, or checking uh, whatever previous talks to understand what, whether it's relevant, how it maps other talks. And yeah, this is an important uh, for analysis. So again, uh, as a uh, um, reviewer, uh, there are multiple objectives. So firstly, to review each talk individually, which is the easy part. And the second part is to actually map uh, the talks um, to agenda, because there are multiple tracks. You need to address the target audience of the entire conference. So the program committee, they basically take uh, the talks, the initial reviews, and then try to match them. So to see what fits, what, what's not, because it's a common case, for example, you have a conference about Kubernetes, and then you have, let's say, uh, 20 similar submissions about how we do continuous delivery with Kubernetes. And you will likely select on the one or two of that. Um, uh, because even if 20 are great, uh, then uh, there are other uh, topics to be covered. So it's also a part uh, for the program committee to find a balanced agenda. Alisa, and what's your experience? Oh, I totally agree. Um, mm -hmm. Having a balanced agenda is super important. You want to cater to to the, the our the entire spectrum of our audience. So beginners to intermediate to advanced, right? Um, and then with regards to speakers, we want to also give um, our, our, our seasoned speakers the opportunity to, to come back and speak, but as well as our beginner speakers. Um, we wanna offer that platform to, you know, people who are just, you know, wanting to start speaking. Um, so that is much welcome at DevOps World as well. Um, 
So for my personal experience, I've been in supporting Jenkins events since, like I said, 2011. So I've, I've hosted these events, I've coordinated these events, I chaired the tracks. Um, so just having seen so many abstracts and seeing the, 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 um, the outcome during the conference helps me to understand, you know, what are people looking for? What's interested to the our audience? And, um, and, you know, we come and pick out what is well-balanced and best for the agenda for the conference as we grow in terms of our, our conference year after year. Another tip uh, specifically for uh, newcomer applicants, uh, there are multiple types of talks. So DevOps World, uh, we usually have lightning talks and uh, full uh, sessions. So if you just start speaking, if it's your first talk, maybe it's better to consider the lightning talk um, because lightning talk, uh, again, is something which allows you to focus on delivering uh, um, a particular message. Sometimes, actually, uh, lightning talks are more complicated than the full talks. Um, but um, yeah, if you're a beginner, if you want to try, it's one of the options. Another option, uh, we will have uh, demos, etc. So if you want to, you can start from these four formats, which are uh, more relaxed than uh, just doing a breakout session for 45 minutes. Yeah, I, I think. Uh, yeah, thank you so much that you raised this point regarding lightning talks because. Of course, when you are trying to plan out a 30, 35 minute long talk, uh, it's a totally different experience as, you know, creating like content for a five to 10 minute lightning talk. So is, uh, are there any specific pointers that you look out for uh, if someone is applying for a lightning talk? Because um, again, you need to deliver the content lightning fast in as quick, uh, as, as little time as possible. So are there any special considerations that you do keep in mind for a lightning talk? Uh, so firstly, a relatively narrow topic, uh, because yeah, lightning talk you have a very limited time. So if we see a topic like how to do DevSecOps with Kubernetes, submit it as a lightning talk. Uh, yeah, uh, likely there will be questions. What exactly you are going to tell in ten minutes? Again, uh, application uh, is uh, um, allows uh, to ask questions uh, to applicants. I hope. Uh, it will be possible this year, so we can discuss with applicants if something is unclear. Uh, but if um, a really wide topic submitted for lightning talk, most likely it's no. Um, and uh, you need to, again to take something specific there uh, because you need to communicate the idea quickly and uh, to communicate something uh, what would be useful to the audience. And I also think it can work the other way around too. So if you make a submission and um, you're requesting for a 30 minute breakout session um, and while our reviewer takes a look at your abstract and they're like, oh, this topic can, you know, we can condense it in, you know, into a 15 minute lightning talk. We will also make that suggestion as well. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Any other questions you would like to ask? Okay, so if you have any questions or if you want to get some feedback, um, again, we started the uh, uh, Slack channel within the Continuous Delivery Foundation Slack. So you can easily join this bug because it's open to everyone. So, so do you see uh, my screen? Uh, can we share our uh, proposals like that we have in the Slack, uh, Slack community and get the, get those reviewed before uh, submitting? Okay, two parts. Can you share? Yes, for sure. Uh, whether you will get a review, it depends. So I added uh, the review committee to this uh, Slack channel. So depending on the availability of reviewers, they might uh, review that. Uh, but I wouldn't uh, set it as 100% commitment at the moment. Uh, so if you want to join, you will just need to click this link. I won't click it because yeah, my Slack is turned off, but you can join. So 
yeah, yeah, as a part of other programs in the Jenkins community, as you well know, for example, for Google Summer of Code, etc., we encourage public applications. We try to provide as much feedback as possible. The case of uh, DevOps world, uh, the specifics is that there are many proposals. So you cannot spend a couple of days on uh, each proposal to discuss with the speaker, etc. Some initial feedback, uh, yes, for sure, maybe uh, some Kony, but uh, I wouldn't expect um, uh, the same level of engagement like we do for, for Google Summer of Code. Just because uh, by, uh, the program committee, all of them have many other responsibilities. And in many cases, it's also a volunteering work. So it's not volunteering for Lisa or me, but yeah, thanks to other contributors, basically community members who decided to join and help with the community agenda. So if they can dedicate uh, several hours, it's already great. Um, but yeah, again, we're not sure what will be the availability specifically in the next two weeks. Okay, if you ask in the chat, it's definitely a great way to start. Okay. Anything else to discuss? Looks like not. So then, thanks everyone. Again, if you have any questions um, after the today's meeting, feel free to ask in the chat. We will have another session on uh, May 10th uh, or 11th. Actually, it will be on 11th. Um, so I will update the announcement because we changed the, the day to this morning because one of the presenters wasn't available. So uh, it will be announced uh, by Jenkins Online Meetup uh, tomorrow. And you're welcome to join the session. So we will uh, have more time for discussion. So again, thanks a lot to everyone. Thanks a lot to Alisa for presenting and for the overview. And looking forward to, uh, to meet you at the Vox World. So, thanks, Oleg. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Bye. -bye. That's all. Bye.